Hello and welcome to this video on deploying Laravel with MySQL on DigitalOcean without Docker. This tutorial is suitable for anyone who wants to build web applications with Laravel and MySQL regardless of their level of experience with these technologies or DigitalOcean. In this tutorial I'll be showing you step by step how to deploy Laravel on DigitalOcean using the latest versions of Laravel version 9, MySQL, and DigitalOcean. I'll cover everything from setting up your DigitalOcean droplet to configuring your Laravel application and connecting it to your MySQL database. By the end of this tutorial, you'll have a fully functional Laravel application running on DigitalOcean. Before we dive into deploying Laravel on DigitalOcean, there are a few things you should be familiar with. Firstly, you should have a basic understanding of Laravel and MySQL. If you're new to these technologies, I recommend checking out beginner-friendly tutorials on these topics. Secondly, you should be comfortable using the command line interface as we will be executing commands throughout this tutorial. Although I will be demonstrating on a Windows machine with Git Bash, the commands will be the same for Mac and Ubuntu users since most of the configuration will be done on the digital ocean droplet rather than on your local machine. And finally, you'll need an active digital ocean account. If you haven't signed up for DigitalOcean yet, go ahead and create an account now by following the link in the description. We won't be using Docker for this deployment, which will be particularly useful for beginner full-stack developers who want to learn the basics of server configuration. With that out of the way, let's get started. I want to give a shout out to Traversy Media for their educational Laravel website, which I'll be using for this project. Here's a quick look at the project we'll be deploying. It's a job posting website with a landing page showing available job posts. The website has authentication for users and a database to store user information and job ads. The first step is to set up a digital ocean droplet. Log in to your DigitalOcean account and click on the Create button in the top right corner of the dashboard. From the drop-down menu, select Droplets. It's important to choose a configuration with a minimum size of 2 GB, but still, depending on the size of your database. Choosing a smaller configuration may lead to slower application performance. Make sure to connect with your SSH key pair for added security. Also, select a data center region closest to your target audience to ensure fast loading times. After selecting your configuration, data center region, and SSH key pair, click on the Create Droplet button and wait for the process to complete. Once the droplet is ready, copy the IP address of the droplet. Now we need to connect to the droplet from our machine. So in our terminal on our local machine, we type in SSH root at IP address and then hit enter. This will connect us to our digital ocean server. We also need to create a new user called Ubuntu. To do that, we will type in add user Ubuntu and follow the prompts to create the new user. Next, we need to add the Ubuntu user to the admin users. To do that, we will type in add user Ubuntu sudo and hit enter. To make sure that the Ubuntu user has access to authorized keys, we need to create a folder for authorized keys for the Ubuntu user. So type in the following command. We also need to copy the authorized keys from the root user to the Ubuntu user. We can do that by typing in the following command in and hitting enter. Lastly, we need to change the owner of the .sh folder to the Ubuntu user. To do that, we will type in the following and hit enter. So we have successfully connected to our digital ocean server and created a new user with administrative privileges. Type exit to log out of the server. Let's connect to our digital ocean server as the Ubuntu user. Open up your terminal and type in sshubuntu at IP address. Hit enter and wait for the prompt. 
This will connect you to your DigitalOcean server as the Ubuntu user. Now let's update our Ubuntu packages. Type in sudo apt-get update and hit enter. Next, we'll install Apache 2. Type in sudo apt-get install Apache 2 and hit enter. Now let's install a firewall to secure our server. Type in sudo apt-get install ufw and hit enter. Now we'll allow Apache, SAH, HTTP, HTTPS and MySQL to come through the firewall. Type in these commands one by one. sudo ufw allow Apache, sudo ufw allow sh, sudo ufw allow http, sudo ufw allow https, sudo ufw allow mysql. We'll set the default outgoing traffic as allow and default incoming traffic as deny. Type in these commands one by one. sudo ufw default allow outgoing, sudo ufw default deny incoming. Now let's enable the firewall. Type in sudo ufw enable and hit enter. Finally, let's check the status of our firewall. Type in sudo ufw status and hit enter. You should see a list of allowed services. Next, we need to install MySQL Server. Type in sudo apt-get install MySQL Server and hit enter. Now let's log into MySQL by typing in sudo mysql and hitting enter. To set a new password for root, type in alter user root at localhost identified with mysql underscore native underscore password by your password and hit enter. We also need to create a new user named Ubuntu on mysql. Type in create user Ubuntu at localhost identified with mysql underscore native underscore password by your password and hit enter. Create the database you will be using by typing in the following command and hit enter. Make sure to use the name of your database. Next, let's grant privileges on that database to the Ubuntu user. Type in the following command. To flush privileges, type in flush privileges and hit enter. Now we can exit MySQL by typing in exit and hitting enter. If you're not populating your database from Laravel, you need to bring in your database as an SQL file from your laptop. Now let's copy the SQL file from our local machine to our server. To do this, we'll use the scp secure copy command. Open up your terminal on your local machine and type in the following command. Now let's log into our DigitalOcean server. In your terminal, type in SSH Ubuntu at IP address and hit enter. Next, let's log into our MySQL server by typing in sudo mysql uroot p and hitting enter. Enter the password for the root user when prompted. Now, let's switch to the database we want to import our data into by typing in the following line and hitting enter. To import our database, we'll use the source command. Type in the following. Finally, exit out of MySQL by typing in exit. We need to install PHP. We can do that by running the following command. Now, let's install Composer. We can do this by running the commands found on the Composer download page. Here's how to do it. Next, we need to move the Composer executable to the bin folder so that we can access it easily. We can do that by running the following line. Now, we need to generate SSH keys. To do this, run the following command. This will generate a public and private key pair. We need to copy our keys to the root user as well. So we'll run the following line. We'll also need to copy our public key, which is stored in the id rsa pub file. We can do this by running cat id rsa pub. 
This will output the contents of the file. We'll need to copy this and add it to our GitHub account. And we'll need to copy the SIH link to our repository so that we can clone it onto our server later on. Now, we will clone our repository and edit the env file to adjust our database variables. First, let's change our directory to where Apache's web pages are located by typing the following command. Next, we need to clone our repository. We'll use git to do that. Type in the following command. This will clone the repository to our server. Let's move into our cloned repository and cd into it. Now we need to create a new env file. This file contains environment variables that our application will use, including our database credentials. We can create a new env file by copying the env example file that should be included in our repository. Type in the following command to copy the file. Now that we have our NV file, we need to edit it to include our database credentials. To edit the file, type in the following command. This will open up the NV file. We can adjust our database variables by finding the lines that specify our database credentials and changing the values to match our server's database. Make sure to save the changes before closing the file. Now, we'll be going over some essential installations and configurations you need to get started with Laravel on Ubuntu. First, let's install some necessary PHP extensions. Enter these commands one by one in your terminal. Make sure to replace PHP MySQL with the relevant version if you're not using PHP 8.1. Now let's update Composer. Enter this command in your terminal. Next, run Composer install. To make Laravel assets public and accessible, run the following command. Finally, we need to restart Apache. Type the following command in your terminal. Next, we need to configure Apache for Laravel. First, let's enable the module rewrite. Run this command. This will enable the module rewrite in Apache. Now we need to edit the Apache configuration file. In the file, find the lines that start with directory var www. Change allow override none to allow override all. Now let's create a copy of the default configuration file for Laravel. Open this file to edit. In the file, change document root var ww html to document root var ww html laragigs your project name slash public. Under this line, add the following lines. Don't forget to allow override all and require all granted. Save the file and exit. Now let's enable this configuration. And disable the default configuration. Finally, restart Apache. Now we will regenerate site keys, edit PHP ENI, and restart Apache. Let's begin by generating new site keys. Next, we need to edit the PHP ENI file to enable the MySQL extension. Here, we need to uncomment the following line. Now save and exit the file, and we need to restart Apache.
Now I'll be guiding you through the process of obtaining SSL certificates for your domain using CertBot. First, head over to CertBot's website. Choose Apache and select your Ubuntu version. In our case, we'll be using Ubuntu 20 and it works for version 22. Once you've done that, run the suggested lines. These will install CertBot on your machine and create a symlink to its binary file. After that, you'll need to set up your domain's DNS to point to your server's IP address. Now, we're ready to set up CertBot with your domain. Choose option 2 when prompted and CertBot will obtain your SSL certificates. After obtaining the certificates, open the Laravel configuration file with the command below and comment out all lines starting with rewrite condition. Then replace them with the following line. Save the file and exit. Now run a dry run to check if the certificates will renew automatically. Once you're done, restart Apache with the following command. Congratulations! You've successfully set up your website. And if you have any questions or suggestions, please let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more helpful tutorials. If this is not your first time following this video and you just need the code lines, you can now buy a PDF with all the commands I've covered in this video on Gumroad. The link to the PDF is in the description box below. Thanks for watching and happy website building.